Biden is a pathetically weak leader, and I am ashamed and embarrassed by what he has done and failed to do. Joe Biden is a placeholder. The only question that has ever mattered was how long he was going to be a placeholder. Welcome everyone to the Moist Ski News for August the 23rd, 2021. If those two tweets weren't enough of a giveaway, yes, we're actually going to cross the water and address the 46th President of the United States, <laughs> Joe Biden, who I have argued many times on the weekly political recap stream on this channel with Trump's LP, has been given far too much of a free pass, to the point where the vast majority of sources I'm going to link down below come from right-leaning tabloids, because nobody seems to have the balls when it's you in charge that is more left-leaning to call out Sleepy Joe for what can only be described as ineptitude on a level that is yet to be quantified. And in before someone says, Ah, oh, but Donald Trump, blah, 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 blah. No one is talking about Donald Trump as a president. We are talking about Joe Biden as a president. And I was more than happy to call Donald Trump out when he made mistakes. And yes, it didn't happen often. On last week's political recap stream with Trupslip, which is also on Spotify, both linked down below, we made it a point to dedicate the vast majority of the show to not only us saying um, but also to the Taliban, essentially reconquering Afghanistan, along with providing context about how it happened and why it happened. The why part is quite interesting, because that can in fact be traced in part to Joe Biden. I did see a lot of people say, actually, it's all Donald Trump's fault. Okay, well you can blame whoever you want. Joe Biden himself eventually conceded the buck stops with him. So that is how I am going to treat this. So for those who don't know, for 20 years, we, the United Kingdom and US, have been in Afghanistan believing that we could somehow stabilize the region. To be honest, no, that was never going to work. We all know this because the Middle East has been a war zone for generations. Long before we got involved, you can trace it back hundreds of years. It's never going to stop. Fundamentalism might play a part. But over those 20 years, what we tried to do was teach the Afghani people Western values, but also teach them to protect themselves, which sadly did not yield the desired results, meaning we have stayed there for a long time, trying to help, but not quite get it right. The Taliban were for a while on the back foot until recently. Joe Biden, because he wants to pull all American troops out by 9-11 as a symbolic gesture, which is unattainable without rushing and causing, well, what's happened, has caused, in effect, panic, suffering, fear. He has, because of one decision derived from misinformation on his part, which come from reports that he has wrongly quoted, believing the government could survive without them, and we know this is a misunderstanding because Defence Secretary Lloyd Austin said that the intelligence assessments concluded the Taliban would take over Afghanistan months to years after US withdrawal, essentially proving the point that the only reason they were kept at bay was because of those who were serving there, i.e. US, American and any other nation involved troops. And we know the Afghan government's collapsed because the president fled with a hundred and something million dollars in cash. He's somewhere else. Living it up. Congratulations, you have money and you have your life. The same cannot be said for those who are now stuck, about to be conquered. The journalists who are being murdered, how dare they report on this? I assume Afghanistan's going to become like North Korea, only state-run media. Approved, of course. Two notable names have called out Joe Biden for this mistake. One of them you all know who he is, we'll get to him last. But the first one you might not have heard of. For 13 years, this man run the United Kingdom. In fact, he with his doughy eyes looked George Bush in the eyes, former president if you don't know which one, it's the younger one, 
and said, we're here for you, and backed the war. Oh boy. I am of course talking of the globalist, philanthropist, Ramona former Prime Minister warmongerer Tony Blair, who believes that this pullout is tragic and a waste of 20 years hard work, and that he also hoped that the sacrifice made by UK troops, including those who died, was not in vain, because achievements in that country over the past 20 years included a generation that grew up without Taliban rule. He also believes that Britain has a moral obligation to stay in Afghanistan until all those who need to be are evacuated. This comes from a statement from his website. He also took a shot at Joe Biden, who constantly referenced the wars in Afghanistan as the forever wars, saying we did it in obedience to an imbecilic political slogan about ending the forever wars, as if our engagement in 2021 was remotely comparable to our commitment 20 or even 10 years ago, in circumstances which troop numbers had declined to a minimum and no allied soldier had lost their life in combat for 18 months. Now I do want to say for the sake of it, many people will take what Tony Blair says and discard it, because he is a factor in all of this that it started anyway. However, I've always said when someone is right, it doesn't matter what they've done before, they are still right. And Tony Blair is, and I hate to say this, he's right. This slogan of ending the forever wars has come at a cost. It has been rushed, and it has come from somebody who others have described as running an autocratic government, with people being too afraid to criticize Sleepy Joe, a name which apparently the Prime Minister of the UK has started referring to Joe Biden as as well with our own what we call special relationship becoming strained because of this decision. To the point it is believed Boris Johnson on the 31st of August at the G7 summit will try and get Biden to change his tactic because this one is reckless. And obviously I have to point this out. Yes, Donald Trump did in fact call out Biden for the greatest military defeat of all time and that this is a total surrender that would have never happened if he was president. That is a paraphrased quote. I only found one source on that from the Daily Mail, because everyone else was calling Trump out and mocking him because he was being booed when he may have implied a little bit, maybe suggested actually, that people get the vaccine in Alabama. Is what has happened a total surrender? By pulling out, Biden has essentially washed his hands and gone, it's now down to you. I find it quite fascinating for somebody who is a Democrat to reduce military action, which is normal from what I've been told, but to do so in such a way that endangers other life while considering themselves a globalist. That's interesting. Now, Trump did point out many people go in on him for meeting with Taliban leaders. His response was, who the hell am I supposed to be negotiating with? because he had made a conditional peace deal with them in 2020 to reduce the number of Afghan troops if the Taliban did not provide support to terrorists. With Trump agreeing to a full military withdrawal by May the 1st, the Biden administration then just decided to blame the timeline for the bot's withdrawal on Trump. But we're in August. What's happened has happened over the last couple weeks. Whether it started in May the 1st or not, with the number of executive orders you signed, Surely one of them would have included you saying, how about we don't do it then? And we know how many you signed, you signed more than anyone else. In your first, what, week? Anyway, as I'm done with this, I'd like to know what you think. I'm going to link everything down below. Do let me know. Drive up the engagement, smash the like, leave a comment. Thank you all for listening.